As you know, your time is money. Running a WordPress website, whether you're trying to sell your product or service online, run a membership site, or any site takes time. What should have been a tool to help you make more money ended up becoming a full-time job. Worse, you're unable to spend your time on your actual business. Sound familiar? We're talking about the most tedious and boring tasks that it takes to run your WordPress site. Everything from the essential website maintenance, creating posts and pages for your content marketing, making sure that your site runs fast, and of course to creating a fantastic experience for your customers. The list continues to go on and on and on. That said, one of the biggest problems is that many people don't know where to start. There are thousands of WordPress plugins out there for you to choose from. But the question is, which one should you use? So we've created a eight part video course that's gonna show you how to free up your valuable time and run your WordPress site on autopilot. So basically what we did is we took all the most boring, most tedious tasks, and we'll show you how to automate the whole process. So here's a quick video's overview of what's inside this video course. Video number one is the introduction. We'll talk about what you need before you get started. Video number two, we'll talk about different automation scenarios so that you have an idea of the different tasks and boring tasks that you might run up against. So we don't really know where you are. You could be an expert, you could be a newbie. So we wanna make sure that we cover all bases. Video number three will actually go into different types of automation. So we'll focus on website maintenance. Video number four, we'll talk about content marketing automation. How do you go about scheduling your posts? And of course, taking that to the next level, video number five, we'll talk about social media automation. In other words, how do you take those posts and pages and content and post them automatically on your social media sites. The truth of the matter is that a lot of people have many different social media platforms and it just that alone itself ends up becoming a full-time job. Video number six, we'll talk about e-commerce automation. In other words, if you run an e-commerce site, what are elements that you can automate within that site? What about if you run a membership site? Well, in video number seven, we'll talk about membership automation. Video number eight, which is the last video, will be about a complete automation plugin. So the difference is videos one through seven cover individual plugins that focus on specific areas. Whereas video number eight, we're gonna be focusing on the overall arching plugins that can automate things to a whole new level. So with that said, go ahead and grab this video course now so that you can start freeing up your time and automating your WordPress site. As you know, your time is money. Running a WordPress website, whether you're trying to sell your product or service online, run a membership site, or any site takes time. What should have been a tool to help you make more money ended up becoming a full-time job. Worse, you're unable to spend your time on your actual business. Sound familiar? We're talking about the most tedious and boring tasks that it takes to run your WordPress site. Everything from the essential website maintenance, creating posts and pages for your content marketing, making sure that your site runs fast, and of course to creating a fantastic experience for your customers. The list continues to go on and on and on. That said, one of the biggest problems is that many people don't know where to start. There are thousands of WordPress plugins out there for you to choose from. But the question is, which one should you use? So we've created a eight part video course that's gonna show you how to free up your valuable time and run your WordPress site on autopilot. So basically what we did is we took all the most boring, most tedious tasks, and we'll show you how to automate the whole process. So here's a quick video's overview of what's inside this video course. Video number one is the introduction. We'll talk about what you need before you get started. Video number two, we'll talk about different automation scenarios so that you have an idea of the different tasks and boring tasks that you might run up against. So we don't really know where you are. You could be an expert, you could be a newbie. So we wanna make sure that we cover all bases. 
Video number three will actually go into different types of automation. So we'll focus on website maintenance. Video number four, we'll talk about content marketing automation. How do you go about scheduling your posts? And of course, taking that to the next level, video number five, we'll talk about social media automation. In other words, how do you take those posts and pages and content and post them automatically on your social media sites? The truth of the matter is a lot of people have many different social media platforms and it just that alone itself ends up becoming a full-time job. Video number six, we'll talk about e-commerce automation. In other words, if you run an e-commerce site, what are elements that you can automate within that site? What about if you run a membership site? Well, in video number seven, we'll talk about membership automation. Video number eight, which is the last video, will be about a complete automation plugin. So the difference is videos one through seven cover individual plugins that focus on specific areas. Whereas video number eight, we're gonna be focusing on the overall arching plugins that can automate things to a whole new level. So with that said, go ahead and grab this video course now so that you can start freeing up your time and automating your WordPress site. Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on automating your WordPress site. So before we get started, I want to give you a quick videos overview of what's inside this video course so you know exactly what to expect and then you can piece it all together at a faster rate. So obviously this is video number one and video number two, which is the next video, we're going to talk about the different automation scenarios. Now I put this particular video in here for a reason. And the reason is some of you may already know exactly what you want to automate via the videos three, four, five, six, seven, but some of you may have no idea what to automate. So this video is going to help you expand your mind and understand kind of what's available to you and what's going to happen so that you can plan ahead. In video number three, we'll talk about website maintenance automation. What this includes are things like updating themes, updating plugins, doing backups, uh, doing just the, the things that you can automate, but if you were not to automate it, it would just take up a lot of time. Video number four, we'll talk about content marketing automation. So in other words, once you have created your content, say for example, your articles, your videos, your audios, once you created that content, how do you go about publishing it and scheduling to be posted in the future. And when it comes to content creation, it can become very tedious. More so, posting it to viewers can take up a lot of time as well. Video number five will talk about social media automation. This particular one actually ends up taking a lot of time, uh, simply because a lot of people have different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, all sorts of social media platforms. So how do you automate it so that when you, let's say, go through video four and you, you post the content, the content automatically schedules, how do you create a system that will see that you've posted it, it'll take that information, and then it'll disperse it automatically so that once you set things up, it's just going to be good to go. So that's what that is going to be about. Video number six, we'll talk about e-commerce automation. So let's say you run a WordPress e-commerce site. Those sites are going to be very different than if you were running uh, something like an informational site. So the needs would be very different. So that's why we're making these different videos to fit and fulfill different needs. We'll talk about different e-commerce shopping carts, how do you go about automating those, you know, different ideas where you can automate and uh, cut down on a lot of time that you would have to manually uh, do, like little tasks here and there. Video number seven, we'll talk about membership automation. So in this case, let's say for example that you run a WordPress membership site, you have a community so how do you go about automating that community as much as possible? Obviously, there's not going to be everything that you can automate. Some things you will just have to do using your hands, but some things you can. 
and some things that you think you can't, you really can. And of course, last but not least, video number eight, we'll talk about best complete automation plugins. We'll talk about free ones and we'll talk about paid ones. Now, what exactly is this? Well, when you look at different parts of these videos, these entail different WordPress plugins. A lot of times just individual plugins that relate to each of these. Now, when we're talking about complete automation, these plugins will allow you to have different parts of your website communicate with each other. So in other words, you're kind of creating a bridge between all of those other plugins. Of course, we'll show you some free ones and paid ones, and both are actually good. One of them actually became free not long ago because it was trying to compete with the one that just came out that was paid. So a lot of times I will say, you know, don't go with free. But the reality is in certain cases, if you know the story behind it, it's actually okay. So with that said, let's move on to what you need before you can get started. Now we assume that you already have a WordPress site created and up and running. You need to have an idea of the type of site that you are running. So if you obviously are running a WordPress site, then you already know what that is in terms of informational, selling product or service, or e-commerce or membership. If you don't have an idea and you're just watching this course to get an idea of how you can automate your WordPress site in the future, then you need to understand which one of these categories does it fit under. Like I said earlier, informational, selling product or service, e-commerce or membership site. And of course you'll need to have some money to purchase WordPress plugins. Like I said, some of these are free, but some of these will cost money. What we're trying to do here is just tell you the plugins that we have tested so that you don't have to test them yourself. Now, when we talk about the free WordPress plugins that we've tested, just bear in mind that free is not always the best in the long term. It might be really good right now and it saves you a lot of money up front, but if it's free, guess what? The developer has no incentive to update it Maybe they have incentive now, but that incentive will eventually run dry. They'll get bored and they'll move on to the next project. So just bear that in mind when you're using a free plugin. All right, so let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two, and we're going to talk about the different automation scenarios or different scenarios that you will encounter that you are going to want to automate. So this is kind of a brief overview of what we'll talk in more depth in the future videos. So I'm logged in into a real live WordPress site. It just so happens that this is a really good example because this example is a site that has not really been maintained as much. So first things first, when it comes to WordPress maintenance, you need to keep it updated in terms of the WordPress core version, the theme updates, and as well as the plugin updates. Now, there's really no way of knowing when an update is going to be pushed. It's really dependent on the vendor, the vendor communicating with you. Sometimes you'll be on their list, sometimes you won't. But you wanna make sure that you get the latest plugin update a lot of times because you'll run into security breaches where maybe the plugin vendor will find a security hole within their plugin. So they've patched it up, they sent it over, and if you don't update it and you wait and wait and wait, um, that could open up your site. So hopefully that gives you an idea of why that can become very tedious because you, unless you're constantly logging into the site each and every day, or a few times a week, then you really truly need to automate it. And even if you are logging into it once a week or every day or, or whatever, you don't have to manually do it. Once you set things up and automated that process, then it's just gonna make your life a lot more easier. The second thing is backups. Backing up your site is crucial. You could rely on your web hosting company to back up your site. And sometimes you can say, you know, let's say you made an error today 
while you're editing the site and you ruin something. You could contact your web hosting company and if they do daily backups, which you know half, some don't, some do, some only do once a month, if that's the case, you can revert. Now, let's say that your web hosting company uh, decides to shut you down for whatever reason, whether you you know violated their terms or maybe you didn't, maybe you did something, you had no idea that it was a violation and they shut your account down. A lot of times in these cases, if you've not backed up your site and they're just like, hey, we closed your account, go away kind of thing. If that's the case, then you don't have a backup of your site. So ideally at the end of the day, you will want to have a backup of your site. Now backups typically are either you can do them manually by installing a plugin and clicking backup, or you can set it up so that it automatically backs up, let's say, for example, every day at midnight. And then maybe once the backup is done, it uploads it to something like Dropbox, Google Drive, or somewhere off of the server. So that's another way to automate your site. And then I briefly talked about this in the intro, but in terms of content marketing, you wanna be able to schedule your post or your pages. Because as time goes on and your website grows, you're gonna create more content. Content creation takes time. So the best thing you can do for yourself is to automate the content schedule. Now, obviously you can't automate content creation unless maybe you're hiring somebody to create content from scratch. And of course, moving on, we have things like social media, auto publishing, which is what we talked about in the previous video. Now going through here, uh, besides the updates, so if I go, you know, click on updates here, you'll see that uh, these two plugins need to be updated. And if I scroll down, you'll see that uh, all of these different themes, some of these themes, maybe I need to go ahead and delete some of them or um, update some of them. So if I go to appearance and themes, for example, you know, if I were having to go th through every single one of these, now obviously in this case, you're not going to have this many themes, uh, but if you want to keep up to date with all the new latest features and all that, that the vendor has pushed out, you have to click update now. Then you have to go to the plugins section and you're going to have to click, you know, update here. And, and it, it just gets really tedious. Now going down, we also have spam. So this, for example, is the Akismet anti-spam. I'll talk more about this later on, but one thing that you're going to run into when you run a blog or anything like that is spam. People usually want to spam and put posts and put comments on your post for the sake of getting a link back to their site. So that's the main reason why most of these companies use these automated softwares to basically spam your blog. And it's going to look unprofessional if your site is showing these comments. So we're going to talk more about that, how to basically automate the process of decreasing spam. Another issue is images. So let's say we go to media library. One of the major downsides in terms of a website that is slowing down is the images. So in other words, every time you upload an image and you post it on a post or a page, it can slow down your site. And the slower your site is, the higher the bounce rate, or in other words, uh, the higher chance a visitor is gonna come to your site and leave your site, and it's gonna affect your rankings. So bearing that in mind, you wanna have a system where you can simply upload your images, and then immediately upon uploading those images, you can have the system basically optimize, meaning it could take a, a big size image and size it down, maybe make it so it's not as clear, but it's clear enough. And it sizes it from like 10 megabytes down to maybe a hundred kilobytes. So obviously that's big jump, but ideally most of the time it's going to be one or two megabytes. 
and then you can use these plugins to automatically size it down. So instead of having to go to Photoshop and then decrease the size and then re-upload the image and doing all that manual tasks, you can automate this process as well. And there's a lot more in terms of, you know, image, not just optimization, but uh, speeding the whole process up. So we'll talk more about that in those particular videos. And then we have like database optimization, you know, as your site grows, more posts, more pages, more comments, and all of that, your database is going to grow. So you wanna make sure that just like themes and plugins, you're going to be able to optimize your database. So that's just kind of a glimpse of different scenarios that you would be wanting uh, to automate. Now, there are obviously going to be a lot more, which I'll show you in the next few videos. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of at least a few so that you can get started. All right, so let's move on to the next video. Welcome back. This is video number three, and we are going to talk about website maintenance automations. So we briefly talked about this in the previous video about how to update your plugins, your themes, and all the other tedious things. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to dive in into each area in starting with the website maintenance. And I'm actually gonna show you which plugins that you should install. And let's say you're watching this 10 years later and this plugin is no longer available. What can you do? If that's the case, before I want to talk about any of this is to show you how to find plugins. One thing you can do is you can go to the plugins section, click on add new, and you're going to see this keyword box. And it's basically a search box, which will allow you to search for all sorts of plugins. So if I type in the keyword plugin update, you can see the amount of active installations, meaning how many people have actually installed this, how many people have reviewed this, what are the ratings. So this is something you want to pay close attention because this is a difference between someone who might be updating their plugin frequently versus maybe a freelancer or somebody who's just doing this for fun or on the side. So you definitely want to go through here and take a look at this kind of as social proof, but a little bit further, you can click on, you know, more details and get an idea of when it was last updated. So for example, this plugin has not been tested and you can see that it was last updated about four months ago. If you see something like this, this is a sure sign to stay away from it. Now, one plugin that we highly recommend is called Easy Updates Manager. Now, if you go here and you take a look at when it was last updated, as of making this video, it was last updated about two weeks ago. And that's a good sign because that tells us that the plugin is most recent. Now, you can further look at like the change log and have an idea of the other things that have been updated. So once you get an idea, okay, this plugin is updated, you need to take a look at the features and the benefits. Does this actually solve your need? So in this case, the easy updates manager, as you can see, it will allow you to update your plugins. So let's go ahead and find this and install this. An easy way to installing plugins on your site is you don't have to download this and then upload it and all that. You can simply go over here and copy and paste the title in the search box here. So we can see that here. And we can also see that 200,000 active installations, 435, uh, really good. It seems like a five star rating, all right? So it says manage all your WordPress updates, individual updates, automatic updates, and loads more. Now bear in mind that a lot of these plugins, they will have like a basic level, free level, and then they'll have a premium pay level. So what you wanna do is you wanna figure out, does the free level actually suit what you need? So we're gonna go ahead and click on install now, 
And then, of course, we'll click on activate once that is done. All right, so click on activate here. And let's just take a look at this particular plugin. So I'm going to close these down. And we will look for location. So configure. So there's a configure. Sometimes you'll find it on the left hand side. Sometimes it's under settings. And sometimes it's under tools. Based on what I'm seeing here, it's simply this configure button. So we're going to click configure. And this message just keeps asking me to update it, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to let uh, this plugin actually do it all. So that's the purpose of this. So it says, thank you for installing easy updates manager. I'm just going to click dismiss. It says disable all updates. This is the master switch and will enable or disable updates for the WordPress installation. So we can en enable all updates. So right now, click that is already enabled. If it's disabled, it's going to have the green check here. So green here, it's already enabled. It says quick configuration actions. Uh, press a button below for quick configuration. This is a quick way to change other settings below on one go. So we can either, you know, update everything or just have the WordPress default settings. And let's see here. If you put your mouse over the question mark, it tells you exactly what it's going to do. It says WordPress acts like this plugin is not installed. Only minor core updates. So in other words, only some updates will be updated. So in this case, you could click auto update everything. And this would actually update every single thing. So right here, it says WordPress core updates. You can dis disable core updates and core updates basically means the WordPress as a whole. So WordPress, the content management system, whatever an update comes out, you want to auto update all releases. So we're going to leave this unchecked because this includes WordPress development updates. And we just want the main final core update. Then we have plugin updates, enable auto updates, enable auto updates for themes, translation updates were, unless you really run something that's related to translation, I would just simply disable it. Um, because that actually will clog up your site. Okay, core notification emails, basically this will email you whenever an update is done. So just simply enter your email there and you're good to go. Now there are other elements here. So we got plugins here, click on plugins. And what's cool about this is you can either just go with the general settings or if you go under plugins, it will allow you to set, okay, I only want these plugins to be updated and I don't want this one here. So that's what this feature would allow you to do. So if you know for a fact that you don't want to update you know, certain plugins for whatever reason, then you can do that. Then we have themes. You can do the same thing with themes. But like I said, typically the easiest way is simply to go with general and you're good to go. Now, if you want to go ahead and check out their premium version to get an idea of if that's what you want to do. But to be honest, the free level pretty much takes care of everything that we want. So, that's good for you. Now, another little plugin that you can have, let's say that you update a plugin and then your site crashes or something, um, or you update your theme and the site crashes. What can you do? Now, in this case, there is a plugin called WP Rollback. And what this enables you to do is, let's say, for example, that situation were to occur. This allows you to basically roll back to the working plugin. And this is really nice to have because anything can happen in terms of WordPress because you're installing, you know, third party WordPress plugins and you don't know if they were programmed correctly or, you know, there's a conflict between one plugin and the other one. So having that option is going to be really good for you. All right. So let me go back to 
Let's see, we installed the WP rollback. Let's see, down here. And let's see, I wanna go back to the updates. So this one here, configure. The next plugin that I wanna talk about is a Kismet. And a Kismet is actually run by the company of that developed WordPress. Now, bear in mind, this does cost money. In fact, if you click on the pricing, you'll see that is it is $5 a month. Now, is it worth it? That is the question. What it does is it basically is a plugin that will monitor the comment section. And if it detects that the comment is spam, it'll automatically throw that comment into spam. We've installed this on many of our websites and at the end of the day, five bucks a month versus trying to just monitor all of your comments, it's worth it in the end. So it really depends on how much you value your time. If you wanna just start out with monitoring and uh, moderating your comments and then maybe upgrading to a Kismet later down the road, you can do that. But this is a plugin and it's really, really useful. They're constantly updating it and coming out with a plugin that really does its job. So next up we have backups. There are many WordPress backup options. And one of them is called Updraft Plus. This is a plugin that we also use and it's very, very um, helpful because not only can you tell the system, hey, I need you to schedule you know, once a day at midnight, you can also have it upload the files to a certain third-party server. So it can upload to FTP, it can upload to Amazon S3, it can upload to you know Google and Dropbox and more. So you can get an idea just from the icons right here. And if you go here, you type in Updraft Plus, you can see that the last update was about four weeks ago. Now, bear in mind that they do have a free version, and then of course they do have a version that is you know, premium. So I would highly recommend that you just come here and check it out, see if the free version fits you or you need to upgrade to the premium version. Now, what's really cool about Updraft Plus is you can actually use the system, log into the system, and then manage from that centralized system all of your websites. So instead of having to just do one website at a time, you can actually automate the whole process on a network of sites. So what you need to do here, same thing, go to plugins, click on add new, and then of course, we're gonna do a search for Updraft Plus, and that's this one here. So this is the one that I was talking about earlier, the dashboard, uh, but this allows you to have a single dashboard to manage all of your WordPress sites. Now, you're not gonna really need this if you only have one site. If you have one site, I just recommend this right here. So this would actually be on your sites and then this would just manage kind of be the central control tower so we're going to click on install now next we'll click on activate and let me quickly show you around so what i like about this is if you're new and you don't know what is what you know they actually walk you through every step of the way So if you go to, let's go through the, the settings here. So backup and restore, you can manually backup now. So in other words, this could back up the site, but it would not be automated out of the box. So if you wanted to say, every time you log in, you click on the backup now button to back it up, you could do that if you wanted to, but that's not really gonna be automated. You want to be able to automate that so what you wanna do is you want to go to settings and you're gonna to need to connect a remote server or storage base. So we've got FTP, Dropbox, Amazon S3, Google Drive, Google Cloud, Backblaze, email, and all these other 
different storage servers that you can back up to. So you can see kind of an idea of the different places that you can back up to. Now, once you've connected this, you can actually tell the system. Uh, so it says files backup schedule. So you could say every two hours, which I don't really recommend unless you have a site that's just booming, has tons of people on it and all that. Even so, in that case, I would do daily and I would do it perhaps, you know, at midnight or something. So I think the free version, it doesn't really allow you to specify the time, but you can do daily and that's fine. That way it doesn't put a huge amount of load on the server. So you can say database backup schedule. I want to do that daily. And then it says, and retain this many scheduled backups. So what that means is, let's say that I want to retain 10. It will back it up every single day for 10 days and it will keep at least 10 days worth of backups. Bear in mind that if you don't have a huge amount of space in your web hosting account, that could pretty much eat it up really fast. So you might want to do something like five. Now, database backups are actually not that big. So you could do something like five or even 10. So really up to you in that case. So it's a matter of just connecting these, setting the schedule, and then of course you have premium extensions so that you have an idea of the different premium options that are available to you. So that's all I would do. I would simply you know, go to settings, connect these, set this up, and you should be good to go. All right, so that's in terms of backups. Now in terms of security automation, because you really don't have time to do any of that, most security plugins are automated, so you don't have to worry about that. But the one that we recommend the most is called WordFence, and that is located at wordfence.com. And you can download this. They have a premium version, and I believe they have also a free version. The free version really can only do so much, so it just makes sense to have the premium version. So if we click on pricing here, you can get an idea of what is you know available to you. But this is something that's good to have. So it's constantly scanning for viruses, for malware, uh, just ways to just protect your WordPress site. Uh, because your WordPress site is an asset, you definitely want to protect it at all costs. So I hope you enjoyed that. Those are just a few things that you can do, but pretty much the main things that you will definitely want to do when it comes to website maintenance. Hello and welcome. This is video number four, and we're going to talk about how to schedule your content in advance. Let's say, for example, that you're going to create the next few months or the next few weeks of content today or even this week. So let's say you create a post. So what you do is whether it's articles, video or audio or, or any type of content, what you do is you go to posts, you click on add new posts, you enter the title, you add the content, and then you tell the system so that you tell the system by clicking this right here, it's actually going to say publish immediately, but you're going to click edit and then you're going to choose the date. And then when you're done, you simply click okay. Now, before I do that, I want to say, how do you know exactly what this time is matched to in terms of time zone? Well, to know that you can simply go down to settings, go to general, and you can set your time zone there. So it could either be your own time zone or maybe a time zone that you choose. That way you know exactly whenever you schedule that, you know that is going to be released on that day at a specific time. Otherwise, if you don't know what time zone that you're using, you're just guessing. So once you're done, you can simply click on schedule and that is it. So that's all it is in terms of auto scheduling your posts. The same with pages, This it's the exact same thing, all right? Okay, now let's talk about image optimization. I briefly talked about this in the first video where I talked about how a lot of times if you have too many images that are just way too big, it'll actually slow down your WordPress site. 
and we want to speed the site up as fast as we can. So to do that, you want to go under plugins, add new and type in these plugins. The first one is called short pixel. And this is the one here. So it says speed up your website and boost your SEO by compressing old and new images. So if you click on more details, you can get a better idea. You can see that the last update was one week ago. And this is actually one of the high recommended image optimization plugins out there. All right. So if we take a look at the live site and go under pricing, you can see that it does offer a free level. So 200 images a month basically means that if you upload anywhere between like 100 to maybe 200 images, then the free level is just for you. But if you upload, let's say a thousand images per month, then you are going to need a higher level. So we can see here, you know, the costs and all that. So it's only $4.99 a month if you want to upload up to 10,000 images. Kraken.io is another one. And uh, this is something that we've used as well. And it's really good. It's very cheap as well. But actually, Short Pixel, I think, is actually cheaper. And then the next one is called EWWW Image Optimizer. And you can find that here. And you can see the last update was 16 hours. This is actually made by a company that produces a lot of really good plugins, but they constantly come out with really, really fantastic updates. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let's install it. And we'll click on activate. And after you've activated to get to it, like I said, it's either under tools or settings. It's under the settings link here under short pixel. And to activate it, you simply need to get your API key to get your API key for free. You simply enter your email here and your API key, and you can actually utilize this. Okay. So once that is done, you simply enter your email, you click save and it immediately brings you to this page and it, it immediately creates an API key for you. Now we have compression type. It will tell you exactly what this is. So lossy compression, it says offers the best compression rate. This is recommended for most users. And then we have glossy and then we have a lossless. So by default, we're just going to leave everything by the default settings like so. Click on save changes. Now, when it comes to actually setting it so that it's optimizing your images, what you need to do is go to your media library and you'll see bulk short pixel. And what this will do is it'll go through all of your existing library of images and it will actually optimize all of those images for you. So you can do this, or if you simply just want to optimize certain images, you can go to your library and you can do them one by one by one. Okay. So if I go to over here, you can see on the right hand side, it says optimize now. So if you click that, it's going to optimize that image and that's all you have to do. So it's actually easier if you just do it with the bulk short pixel. And then any image after that, it'll automatically optimize as well. That's it. And let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number five. And we're going to talk about how to automate your social media from your WordPress site. So in other words, how do you get it to post the content? Let's say you upload or schedule a WordPress post in seven days. And then during those seven days, it goes live, it gets published. And then you want to take that content and then post it to, let's say Facebook, Pinterest, 
Twitter and all of your other social media platforms. If you did this manually, it would just take a lot of time. And if you've done this, you know it takes a lot of time. Now, there are some WordPress plugins, but we don't recommend any of them. There might be some that are really good, but the ones that we recommend are, it's not actually a plugin, but it's, there are two sites. The first site is called Zapier, that's Z-A-P-I-E-R.com. It's a site that will connect all sorts of apps together. And then there is a free version, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But if you go to Zapier and you do a search, let's go to here, do a search for WordPress, you can kind of get an idea of all the sorts of different scenarios that are available to you. So what this will do is it'll connect to your blog like so, and then you can connect them to all sorts of other apps such as Facebook pages, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, and all these other social media platforms like YouTube, Buffer, and more. But of course, bear in mind that things like YouTube, you're not gonna be able to post a piece of content to YouTube because those are videos. But you can do that like on Facebook pages, you can do that on Twitter, you can do that on Pinterest, you can do that on LinkedIn or even Buffer. So you can see that WordPress is connected to 84 apps. Now, what you might wanna do is you might wanna to check to make sure that it is connected to all of the social media platforms that you're using. It's really easy to use and I'll actually show you with IFTTT, which is the second platform. This is IFTTT, so IF and then three T's. It stands for if, then, then, else. Or if this happens, then this happens, basically. And that's kind of how Zapier works. But ifttt.com is actually free. So if you go to ifttt.com, you will come here, you create an account, you create an account for free, and then you can go under the search bar here and get an idea of the different variety of social platforms that you can post to. And it's very similar to Zapier. All you have to do is simply connect it to your WordPress site. You just follow the instructions on the screen to do that. And then you then connect to your other social media platforms like Pinterest. You connect to your Twitter account, to like your Pinterest account and others. And then once you do that, you can select these things called recipes. So like we have WordPress, to Pinterest. So if we click on this one, for example, actually, we'll just click on this one. So this is going to Twitter. So as you can see, it's simple. You just click connect and it'll connect to your WordPress and then it'll connect to your Twitter and then it'll bridge both of them so that anytime you post to WordPress, the system will listen carefully. And then when it sees that something gets posted, it'll then post it to Twitter. So that's how you automate your social media. It's really simple. It does take a little bit of time to set it up, but you're gonna be happy once that's done because you're not gonna have to manually copy and paste the link to all of these sites manually ever again. All right, so that's basically how to do it. I showed you the a paid version, which is, which is Zapier. It does have a lot more apps that are integrated into WordPress and then of course, you have ifttt.com, which is the site right here, which doesn't have as many, but it's free. And for the most part, it is connected to the majority of social media platforms that are out there. If you're using really small social media platforms that might not be available, just bear that in mind. So compare the two to see which one is best for you. Hello and welcome to video number six, where we talk about e-commerce automation. So if you run any sort of e-commerce site and you're selling products or services, then this video is for you. If you're not, let's say you're running a WordPress membership site, then you can skip this video and then head to that video. So in terms of automation, it really comes down to 
what is running your e-commerce shop. If you're running an e-commerce shop utilizing WordPress, you're most likely going to be using WooCommerce simply because it is one of the best and it is leading and it is actually run by the people who run WordPress. So the code is really good and it's always updated very, very frequently. So if you go to WooCommerce.com, that's WooCommerce.com and you go under the extension store and you look for a plugin called Automate Woo and you scroll down, you can get an idea of how it can automate a lot of pieces of your e-commerce store. Now it is 99 bucks. Sometimes you can get good deals whenever they launch something brand new. Sometimes they'll come out with like 20% discounts, but I definitely can say that I have seen them come out with Black Friday sales all the time. So that's actually a really good time to stock up on your plugins in terms of the ones by WooCommerce. So as you can see, it says here, it can automate and optimize communication for your customer in terms of follow up emails. You can set up the abandoned cart emails. So in other words, if somebody adds something to their cart and they leave, you can contact them. So here are other features that automate woo has. So you can win back inactive customers. You can target inactive customers with email marketing campaigns, SMS notifications, review rewards. It basically just makes the life of your customer a lot easier, more fun to get people to spend more money in your site. Now, bear in mind, this is an e-commerce site. So a lot of these can actually be used for memberships as well. Now, in terms of WooCommerce, if you're just using WooCommerce by itself, you're not using memberships or subscriptions or anything like that. You're just selling products. Another option that you can take to automate specific tasks that you need is by simply by going to Zapier. So we talked briefly about this in the previous video, that's Z-A-P-I-E-R.com. And you'll see when you scroll down and you do a search for WooCommerce, you'll see this. And you can see that it connects with a variety of different other programs. So let's say somebody makes a purchase and you want to add them to active campaign immediately. You don't want to have to write it down and then, you know, upload it to an autoresponder or, or even let's say you want to have a spreadsheet filled with all of the orders so that when you do your taxes at the end of the year, you have it in front of you. So if you wanted to do that, that's not something that you could be doing with like automate woo. That's something that you would have to use with Zapier. So let's say we want to connect with Google Sheets. So as you can see, WooCommerce plus Google Sheet integrations. And you can see here that anytime somebody, let's say, buys a product, you can add them to a specific row on the Google spreadsheet sheets. So it really comes down to what are tasks in your business that are just taking a lot of time. Write those down and even though it may you may think that it doesn't really fit, you most likely will be able to find a solution with Zapier because there's so many different integrations with all these other different plugins. Now, Zapier does cost money, but for the most part, it's fairly cheap and the lower level is really not expensive at all. So this is what I highly recommend if you want to automate your e-commerce store. There are plugins out there, but at the end of the day, it really depends on what you as a business owner, as an e-commerce shop owner needs to automate. So write that down and then go to the site and find the solution. Welcome back, this is video number seven and let's talk about membership sites. 
So if you run a membership site that utilizes WordPress or you're looking to run one, then this is the video for you. Now, there are many different WordPress plugins out there in terms of membership plugins. There is WooCommerce memberships, as you can see here. So if you want the ability to you know, have a community and you want to sell memberships, you can use this plugin. But bear in mind that this plugin can do a lot, but it can only do so much. If you want a lot more features, you're most likely going to go with a, another membership plugin. So it really depends on your needs. You really need to jot down what it is you want to do in your membership site and then see whether or not these different membership plugins actually are going to do the job for you. So in terms of automation, if you go with something like, let's say, Wishlist member, and that is located at member.wishlistproducts.com. And this is a membership plugin for WordPress and allows you to create communities and membership sites, as you can see, online courses and more. You want to go here and just make sure that it is going to be good for you. Now, bear in mind that if you want to automate things, it's very limited because unless you use something like WooCommerce memberships, you're not going to find a lot of automation unless it's created by the vendor themselves. So it really comes down to looking at the features and just seeing whether that is going to fit you or not. Now, I will say one plugin is called MemberPress, memberpress.com. This is a really good plugin because I'm going to show you another plugin in the next video where it actually integrates with a lot of these more popular WordPress membership plugins. And it'll allow you to automate and have the different WordPress plugins basically communicate with each other and create that bridge. So I'm going to keep this one open, but if you want to do like automations straight out of the box using something like Zapier, then you would need to use something like WooCommerce memberships. So what I would do is I would get WooCommerce, which is free, and then I would get WooCommerce memberships, which is $199. And I, I gave you some tips on how to find good deals in the previous video, such as uh, Black Friday sales, or sometimes when they come out with big launches of a new product, they'll come out with like 20% or 40% off kind of discounts. And then we have Automate Woo, which could be good for your membership site as well. So a lot of these e-commerce plugins are actually really good for membership plugins as well. So you can use Zapier.com as well. If you use WooCommerce memberships, you can say if somebody buys the product, which is a membership, then do this. Either add them to a spreadsheet, you can you know, email the customer, add them to active campaign, to a specific tag, maybe some send them something special. You can do just about everything that you can think of in terms of that. Now, let's say, for example, that you want to use a plugin like this and you want to automate it. Well, if you want to do that, then you're going to need to have a WordPress plugin. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about two different plugins that you can use. And you'll, you'll see in a minute how it talks to a variety of WordPress plugins within your site. So instead of using Zapier, it's actually going to sit within your WordPress site. All right, so let's move on to that video so I can show you how to automate your membership sites, your e-commerce sites, your all different types of sites within your site. And by doing that, you'll actually save a lot of money by not using Zapier. Let's move to that video. Hello and welcome to video number eight. Congratulations, you've reached the end of this video course. I'm gonna talk about two really awesome plugins that will allow you to uh, pretty much do what Zapier or IFTTT does, but within your WordPress site. And by doing this, this might actually decrease your costs, but allow you to do so much more. There are two different plugins. There's one called Automator 
plugin.com and that is the uncanny automator these guys i will say they update their plugin and their plugin is amazing so if we scroll down you can kind of get an idea of the integrations and you'll actually see in a minute member press is on the list so i showed you member press in the previous video but because it allows you to integrate with like BB Press, Buddy Press, bunch of form, easy digital downloads, Gamma Press, Learn Dash, so you can run courses, you know, with forms and all that. So at the end of the day, you can basically mix and match. So you also got WooCommerce here, and they I can say that they actually integrate with things like WooCommerce subscriptions. So you can run a membership site like a monthly membership with member press maybe an online course um, uh, monthly online courses through WooCommerce and you basically can make all of these plugins talk with each other so if you want to do something like a trigger from here and then an action from here and then a trigger from here and then an action from here you can do that it doesn't have to be one trigger and then one action it can be a sequential series of different actions. So I wanted to show you this because by taking this route, the initial license is actually free for this one. So if you click on get automator, you can get an idea of the price range. This actually used to cost money, but because of a different plugin, which I'll show you in just a minute, they decided to come out with a free version so lucky for you you can see that there's unlimited triggers unlimited actions you get one site and this actually is way better than zapier if if what you need is within this plugin zapier is really good if you have other tasks like you want to post to google sheets it cannot do that this cannot do that this is more of a bridge between your existing WordPress plugins that is on the list. So this is what I really like. It's free. The only reason why you would go over here is if you wanted to have like more than one site and you want to have two sites and you want to have premium help desk support, which I'll say their support is definitely really good. And you have logged in and anonymous recipes. The difference is logged in basically means that you can only create automations for people who are logged in. The anonymous means that people are not logged in. Let's say you want to create something where if somebody, a visitor visits your site, then do this kind of thing. But I will say for the most part, there's not a whole lot of recipes in terms of the anonymous recipes. It's mainly for the logged in. So go to the site. It's Uncanny Automator. It's free for the first site and a little bit more money if you have more sites. And the location is automatorplugin.com. That's automatorplugin.com. The second plugin is called Automator WP. And I will say this thing just takes it to a whole new level. In fact, uh, this vendor is the same vendor that creates gamma press which is another really amazing wordpress plugin suite so as you can see here they have a ton of add-ons and a ton of triggers and actions so let's just take a look at that so these are the add-ons so you can see it's about i'd say looks like twice the size of the other plugin so they have what we call an all la carte system. So you can either just buy the ones that you want. Let's say you run these forms and gravity forms and learn dash and WooCommerce, and you just want those three. You can just buy those three and that's it. But I will say that they also have an option where you can pay a yearly fee and get access to everything. And that's something that is an option as well. But you can see that not only is it the WordPress plugins, you can also say if somebody clicks a link, if somebody clicks a button, if let's say you receive a webhook, 
then do this. So there are a lot more things that you can do. You can see that member press is built in, learn dash, WooCommerce. So a lot of very similar stuff to the other plugin. And you can get an idea of the different triggers and actions. Now, one thing I will say, the vendor of this, whenever you reach out to them, they respond and they update their plugin like really, really fast. That's something that I've never seen done before with most WordPress companies. So those are the two plugins that I would highly recommend. Like I said, the first one for the Uncanny is free. And then this one here, you can actually buy the yearly. The yearly is not that expensive. Um, sometimes they'll run deals, especially on Black Friday, if you look out for that. Um, and there you go. So go through the triggers, see if they have what you need. If they don't, email this vendor and say, hey, I, I need this. I, I'm looking to buy, but I need this and see what they say. Sometimes they'll actually implement it. Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on automating your WordPress site. So before we get started, I want to give you a quick videos overview of what's inside this video course so you know exactly what to expect and then you can piece it all together at a faster rate. So obviously this is video number one and video number two, which is the next video, we're going to talk about the different automation scenarios. Now I put this particular video in here for a reason. And the reason is some of you may already know exactly what you want to automate via the videos three, four, five, six, seven, but some of you may have no idea what to automate. So this video is going to help you expand your mind and understand kind of what's available to you and what's going to happen so that you can plan ahead. In video number three, we'll talk about website maintenance automation. What this includes are things like updating themes, updating plugins, doing backups, uh, doing just the, the things that you can automate. But if you were not to automate it, it would just take up a lot of time. Video number four, we'll talk about content marketing automation. So in other words, once you have created your content, say for example, your articles, your videos, your audios, once you created that content, how do you go about publishing it and scheduling it to be posted in the future? And when it comes to content creation, it can become very tedious. More so, posting it to viewers can take up a lot of time as well. Video number five, we'll talk about social media automation. This particular one actually ends up taking a lot of time uh, simply because a lot of people have different social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, all sorts of social media platforms. So how do you automate it so that when you, let's say, go through video four and you, you post the content, the content automatically schedules, how do you create a system that will see that you've posted it, it'll take that information and then it'll disperse it automatically so that once you set things up, it's just going to be good to go. So that's what that is going to be about. Video number six, we'll talk about e-commerce automation. So let's say you run a WordPress e-commerce site. Those sites are going to be very different than if you were running uh, something like an informational site. So the needs would be very different. So that's why we're making these different videos to fit and fulfill different needs. We'll talk about different e-commerce shopping carts. How do you go about automating those, you know, different ideas where you can automate and uh, cut down on a lot of time that you would have to manually uh, do like little tasks here and there. Video number seven, we'll talk about membership automation. So in this case, Let's say, for example, that you run a WordPress membership site. You have a community. So how do you go about automating that community as much as possible? Obviously, there's not going to be everything that you can automate. Some things you will just have to do using your hands, but some things you can. And some things that you think you can't, you really can. And of course, last but not least, video number eight, we'll talk about best complete automation plugins. We'll talk about free ones and we'll talk about paid ones. Now, what exactly is this? Well, when you look at 
different parts of these videos. These entail different WordPress plugins. A lot of times just individual plugins that relate to each of these. Now, when we're talking about complete automation, these plugins will allow you to have different parts of your website communicate with each other. So in other words, you're kind of creating a bridge between all of those other plugins. Of course, we'll show you some free ones and paid ones, and both are actually good. One of them actually became free not long ago because it was trying to compete with the one that just came out that was paid. So a lot of times I will say, you know, don't go with free. But the reality is in certain cases, if you know the story behind it, it's actually okay. So with that said, let's move on to what you need before you can get started. Now we assume that you already have a WordPress site created and up and running. You need to have an idea of the type of site that you are running. So if you obviously are running a WordPress site, then you already know what that is in terms of informational selling product or service or e-commerce or membership. If you don't have an idea and you're just watching this course to get an idea of how you can automate your WordPress site in the future, then you need to understand which one of these categories does it fit under. Like I said earlier, informational, selling product or service, e-commerce or membership site. And of course you'll need to have some money to purchase WordPress plugins. Like I said, some of these are free, but some of these will cost money. What we're trying to do here is just tell you the plugins that we have tested so that you don't have to test them yourself. Now, when we talk about the free WordPress plugins that we've tested, just bear in mind that free is not always the best in the long term. It might be really good right now and it saves you a lot of money up front, but if it's free, guess what? The developer has no incentive to update it. Maybe they have incentive now, but that incentive will eventually run dry. They'll get bored and they'll move on to the next project. So just bear that in mind when you're using a free plugin. All right, so let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two, and we're going to talk about the different automation scenarios or different scenarios that you will encounter that you are going to want to automate. So this is kind of a brief overview of what we'll talk in more depth in the future videos. So I'm logged in into a real live WordPress site. It just so happens that this is a really good example because this example is a site that has not really been maintained as much. So first things first, when it comes to WordPress maintenance, you need to keep it updated in terms of the WordPress core version, the theme updates, and as well as the plugin updates. Now there's really no way of knowing when an update is going to be pushed. It's really dependent on the vendor, the vendor communicating with you. Sometimes you'll be on their list, sometimes you won't. But you wanna make sure that you get the latest plugin update a lot of times because you'll run into security breaches where maybe the plugin vendor will find a security hole within their plugin. So they've patched it up, they send it over, and if you don't update it and you wait and wait and wait, um, that could open up your site. So hopefully that gives you an idea of why that can become very tedious because you, unless you're constantly logging into the site each and every day or a few times a week, then you really truly need to automate it. And even if you are logging into it once a week or every day or, or whatever, you don't have to manually do it. Once you set things up and automated that process, then it's just gonna make your life a lot more easier. The second thing is backups. Backing up your site is crucial. You could rely on your web hosting company to back up your site. And sometimes you can say, you know, let's say you made an error today while you're editing the site and you ruined something. You could contact your web hosting company and if they do daily backups, which, you know, half, some don't, some do, some only do once a month. If that's the case, you can revert. Now, let's say that 
your web hosting company uh, decides to shut you down for whatever reason, whether you, you know, violated their terms or maybe you didn't, maybe you did something, you had no idea that it was a violation and they shut your account down. A lot of times in these cases, if you've not backed up your site and they're just like, hey, we closed your account, go away kind of thing. If that's the case, then you don't have a backup of your site. So ideally at the end of the day, you will want to have a backup of your site. Now backups typically are either you can do them manually by installing a plugin and clicking backup, or you can set it up so that it automatically backs up. Let's say, for example, every day at midnight. And then maybe once the backup is done, it uploads it to something like Dropbox, Google Drive, or somewhere off of the server. So that's another way to automate your site. And then I briefly talked about this in the intro, but in terms of content marketing, you want to be able to schedule your post or your pages. Because as time goes on and your website grows, you're going to create more content. Content creation takes time. So the best thing you can do for yourself is to automate the content schedule. Now, obviously you can't automate content creation unless maybe you're hiring somebody to create content from scratch. And of course, moving on, we have things like social media, auto publishing, which is what we talked about in the previous video. Now going through here, uh, besides the updates. So if I go, you know, click on updates here, you'll see that uh, these two plugins need to be updated. And if I scroll down, you'll see that uh, all of these different themes, some of these themes, maybe I need to go ahead and delete some of them or um, update some of them. So if I go to appearance and themes, for example, you know, if I were having to go th through every single one of these, now obviously in this case, you're not gonna have this many themes, uh, but, if you want to keep up to date with all the new latest features and all that, that the vendor has pushed out, you have to click update now. Then you have to go to the plugins section and you're going to have to click, you know, update here. And, and it just gets really tedious. Now going down, we also have spam. So this, for example, is the Akismet anti-spam. I'll talk more about this later on, but one thing that you're going to run into when you run a blog or anything like that is spam. People usually want to spam and put posts and put comments on your post for the sake of getting a link back to their site. So that's the main reason why most of these companies use these automated softwares to basically spam your blog. And it's going to look unprofessional if your site is showing these comments. So we're going to talk more about that, how to basically automate the process of decreasing spam. Another issue is images. So let's say we go to media library. One of the major downsides in terms of a website that is slowing down is the images. So in other words, every time you upload an image and you post it on a post or a page, it can slow down your site. And the slower your site is, the higher the bounce rate, or in other words, uh, the higher chance a visitor is gonna come to your site and leave your site, and it's gonna affect your rankings. So bearing that in mind, you wanna have a system where you can simply upload your images, and then immediately upon uploading those images, you can have the system basically optimize, meaning it could take a, a big size image and size it down, maybe make it so it's not as clear, but it's clear enough. And it sizes it from like 10 megabytes down to maybe a hundred kilobytes. So obviously that's big jump, but ideally most of the time it's going to be one or two megabytes. And then you can use these plugins to automatically size it down. So instead of having to go to Photoshop, and then decrease the size and then re-upload the image and doing all that manual tasks, you can automate this process as well. And there's a lot more in terms of, you know, image 
not just optimization, but uh, speeding the whole process up. So we'll talk more about that in those particular videos. And then we have like database optimization, you know, as your site grows, more posts, more pages, more comments, and all of that, your database is going to grow. So you wanna make sure that just like themes and plugins, you're going to be able to optimize your database. So that's just kind of a glimpse of different scenarios that you would be wanting uh, to automate. Now, there are obviously going to be a lot more, which I'll show you in the next few videos. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of at least a few so that you can get started. All right, so let's move on to the next video. Welcome back, this is video number three, and we are gonna talk about website maintenance automations. So we briefly talked about this in the previous video about how to update your plugins, your themes, and all the other tedious things. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to dive in into each area in starting with the website maintenance, and I'm actually gonna show you which plugins that you should install. And let's say you're watching this 10 years later and this plugin is no longer available. What can you do? If that's the case, before I wanna talk about any of this is to show you how to find plugins. One thing you can do is you can go to the plugins section, click on add new, and you're gonna see this keyword box. And it's basically a search box which will allow you to search for all sorts of plugins. So if I type in the keyword plugin update, you can see the amount of active installations, meaning how many people have actually installed this, how many people have reviewed this, what are the ratings. So this is something you wanna pay close attention because this is a difference between someone who might be updating their plugin frequently versus maybe a freelancer or somebody who's just doing this for fun or on the side. So you definitely wanna go through here and take a look at this kind of as social proof, but a little bit further, you can click on you know more details and get an idea of when it was last updated. So for example, this plugin has not been tested and you can see that it was last updated about four months ago. If you see something like this, this is a sure sign to stay away from it. Now, one plugin that we highly recommend is called Easy Updates Manager. Now, if you go here and you take a look at when it was last updated, as of making this video, it was last updated about two weeks ago. And that's a good sign because that tells us that the plugin is most recent. Now you can further look at like the change log and have an idea of the other things that have been updated. So once you get an idea, okay, this plugin is updated, you need to take a look at the features and the benefits. Does this actually solve your need? So in this case, the Easy Updates Manager, as you can see, it will allow you to update your plugins. So let's go ahead and find this and install this. An easy way to installing plugins on your site is you don't have to download this and then upload it and all that. You can simply go over here and copy and paste the title in the search box here. So we can see that here. And we can also see that 200,000 active installations, 435, uh, really good, it seems like a five-star rating, all right? So it says manage all your WordPress updates, individual updates, automatic updates, and loads more. Now bear in mind that a lot of these plugins, they will have like a basic level, free level, and then they'll have a premium pay level. So what you wanna do is you wanna figure out, does the free level actually suit what you need? So we're gonna go ahead and click on install now, and then of course we'll click on activate once that is done. All right, so click on activate here, and let's just take a look at this particular plugin. So I'm gonna close these down, and we will look for the location. So 
configure so there's a configure sometimes you'll find it on the left hand side sometimes it's under settings and sometimes it's under tools based on what i'm seeing here is simply this configure button so we're going to click configure and this message just keeps asking me to update it but i'm not going to do that now i'm going to let uh, this plugin actually do it all so that's the purpose of this so it says thank you for installing easy updates manager i'm just going to click dismiss it says disable all updates this is the master switch and will enable or disable updates for the wordpress installation so we can en enable all updates so right now click that it's already enabled if it's disabled it's gonna have the green check here so green here it's already enabled it says quick configuration actions uh, press a button below for quick configuration this is a quick way to change other settings below on one go so we can either you know update everything or just have the wordpress default settings and let's see here if you put your mouse over the question mark it tells you exactly what it's going to do it says wordpress acts like this plugin is not installed only minor core updates so in other words only some updates will be updated so in this case you could click auto update everything and this would actually update every single thing so right here it says wordpress core updates you can dis disable core updates and core updates basically means the wordpress as a whole so wordpress the content management system whenever an update comes out you want to auto update all releases so we're going to leave this unchecked because this includes wordpress development updates and we just want the main final core update then we have plugin updates enable auto updates enable auto updates for themes translation updates were unless you really run something that's related to translation i would just simply disable it um, because that actually will clog up your site okay core notification emails basically this will email you whenever an update is done so just simply enter your email there and you're good to go now there are other elements here so we got plugins here click on plugins and what's cool about this is you can either just go with the general settings or if you go under plugins it will allow you to set okay i only want these plugins to be updated and i don't want this one here so that's what this feature would allow you to do so if you know for a fact that you don't want to update you know certain plugins for whatever reason then you can do that then we have themes you can do the same thing with themes but like i said typically the easiest way is simply to go with general and you're good to go now if you want to go ahead and check out their premium version to get an idea of if that's what you want to do but to be honest the free level pretty much takes care of everything that we want so that's good for you now another little plugin that you can have let's say that you update a plugin and then your site crashes or something um, or you update your theme and the site crashes what can you do now in this case there is a plugin called wp roll back and what this enables you to do is let's say for example that situation were to occur this allows you to basically roll back to the working plugin and this is really nice to have because anything can happen in terms of wordpress because you're installing you know third-party wordpress plugins and you don't know if they were programmed correctly or you know there's a conflict between one plugin and the other one so having that option is going to be really good for you all right so let me go back to let's see we installed the wp rollback let's see down here and Let's see i'm going to go back to the updates 
So this one here, configure. The next plugin that I want to talk about is a Kismet. And a Kismet is actually run by the company of that developed WordPress. Now, bear in mind this does cost money. In fact, if you click on the pricing, you'll see that is it is five dollars a month. Now, is it worth it? That is the question. What it does is it basically is a plugin that will monitor the comment section. And if it detects that the comment is spam, it'll automatically throw that comment into spam. We've installed this on many of our websites. And at the end of the day, five bucks a month versus trying to monitor all of your comments, it's worth it in the end. So